Hey guys, this is Josh here with Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to bring you a short little video on three obscure plants you guys might see while you're foraging. And in this video, we're going to be talking a little bit about what these plants look like, and we're going to be talking about their names. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, now the first plant that we're looking at here today is called Pennsylvania Smartweed. And this is in the Polygonum family, and there are a whole lot of plants in the Polygonum family. There are over 900 Polygonum species within the United States alone. So there can be a lot of variety, and these plants hybridize very easily with each other. There is another Polygonum species that looks similar in flower structure. However, its leaf structure is completely different. This plant has a very beautiful elongated cluster of pink to white flowers, and they can be white as you can see here. Flowers themselves will grow in this huge elongate cluster with a whole lot of flowers. If we look very closely at the flowers, we can see they look almost like little peas. They're, they look closed off. They appear to be closed off. And that's just the look that this flower has. Now right there we can see an insect trying to do his job. That's awesome to see. And we can also see the stem rising up through this elongated cluster. We can see that green stem through the elongated cluster of pink to white flowers. Now sometimes these flowers can appear purple, and there are a whole lot of variations within the flower colors themselves. So if we look around the area where we find these flowers, we're probably going to be finding a whole lot of them. And you may think that what makes this plant obscure if it grows in such large quantities? The fact that not many people really know what this plant is, that's what makes this plant obscure. As you can see, this plant forms these large mats and these large colonies, and this is very as you can see, this plant forms these large colonies of the smartweed, and this is very typical of polygonum species. It's very well known that polygonums, like Japanese knotweed, for example, can be horribly invasive. The leaves of Pennsylvania smartweed are very simple in their structure. They're ovate to lance-shaped with smooth margins, and they come to this very fine point, just like we can see right here. If we look along the sides or the margins of the leaves, we're going to notice that they are smooth without teeth. The underside of the leaves of Pennsylvania Smartweed are a dull grayish white in color. They don't have any other distinct features. They don't have any distinct feels or hairs or anything of that nature, but they are this dull grayish white in appearance. The leaves will grow the leaves of Pennsylvania Smartweed will grow up the stem in an alternating pattern. And another interesting feature that you're going to notice if we look closely at the nodes, if we look at the nodes of each plant, we're going to notice this small sheath on each node where the leaves are coming out of the main stem of the plant. And now this is a very common feature on multiple smartweeds, and especially ladies' thumb, which is another polygonum or a smartweed species that a lot of people are going to notice. Now if we look very up close and personal, at the sheath in between the nodes where the new leaves are starting, we're going to notice these little frond-like hairs that are coming out of the sheath. And that is a distinct feature of this plant. As we follow the stem of Pennsylvania Smartweed down at each node past the sheath, we're going to notice a slight crook or a bend in the stem. Just like we can see on this plant right here turned at this side angle. Another thing we're going to notice about the stem of this plant is that it's brownish red or rust red in color and appearance. Okay, now the next plant that we're going to be talking about today is called Virginia Knotweed. Now, something you might notice in the trend in this video is every plant has weed in the last part of its common name. Ironically enough, the only one that is a true invasive weed that can be a real problem is Pennsylvania Smartweed. Virginia knotweed is another polygonum species that's native to the United States, and it has this very long very, very long spike of these white flowers. And the flowers, as you're going to notice, will alternate up this very long stem or spike that the plant has. If we look closely at these flowers, we're going to notice that they are white and they appear to again be closed off. However, these have this very distinct spike towards the very bottom of the flower, just like we can see right here. And we're going to notice this on each one of the flowers going all the way up the spike on Virginia knotweed. The leaves of Virginia knotweed are very simple. They're broad and ovate, and they come to a very fine or sharp point, just like we can see on this one right here. The tip of this leaf is extremely sharp, not sharp enough to cut, obviously, because it's a leaf, but it is very fine and sharp at its tip. And we're going to notice this on each one of the leaves, just like we can see here. 
The vein structure of the leaf is very parallel if we follow the petiole of the stem all the way up the leaf and we can see these main veins running off to the side in this parallel form, i.e. you're going to be seeing a vein on one side and one exactly on the opposite side of the leaf and they're going to curve upwards. If we look upon the sides or the margins of these leaves, we are going to notice that they are absolutely smooth, there are no teeth and there are no lobes. So this is a very simple leaf and structure. Just like most polygonum species, if we follow up the stem, we're going to notice an alternate leafing structure and at each node, we're also going to notice a sheath, just like we can see on these nodes right here, where you can see this very brown, almost woody-like substrate coming out of each sheath. And here you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about with the sheath out the leaf nodes where this brown woody stumps it, where this brown woody substance comes out of the sheath. And this is a unique feature to this polygonum species specifically. So that's an interesting thing to keep in mind. When it comes to the long elongated flower spike of Virginia knotweed, it can be extremely long all the way up to three or four feet long. I usually only find it about one to three feet in my area, and very rarely do I find it over three feet long. However, this gives you guys a good idea because here's the base of the knotweed plant, and then here we can see this long spike coming all the way up. Okay, now the last plant that we're going to be talking about today is called ironweed. And ironweed is really easily noticeable by its very distinct maroonish pink flowers that it has right here. And these flowers have kind of a bristly appearance or kind of a fuzzy appearance, especially if we turn them at the side or at a silhouette angle just like this. Now there are a lot of different species of ironweeds and these species, these plants hybridize very easily with each other. So discerning one from another is not really necessary, mainly because they're all supposedly usable in the same ways. However, we're not going to talk about the uses of this plant. We are going to talk about what it looks like a little bit here. Ironweed is a really common plant that's found around the edges of rich fields and the edges of rich wood lines. It can be found along the side of your property, along the back of your property, anywhere you have a tree line growing, this plant can grow. I usually find it mixed in with thistles and Queen Anne's lace and even yarrow and things of that nature. So that gives you an idea of the area that this plant usually does grow in. If we take a very close look at the flowers of ironweed, we're going to notice not only this distinct color that it has, but we can notice all of the individual flowers on this globular sort of flower cluster that ironweed has. And there are dozens of flowers within each one of these, and the pistils or stamens of each flower are going to come out and give it this sort of bristly or brushy appearance. The leaves of ironweed are very elongate, and they have a lance shape all the way down the leaf. They are extremely long. Here is my hand for a good comparison so you can see just how long these leaves really are. If we look very closely upon the margins or the sides of the leaves, we're going to notice these very fine teeth, very sharp serrated edges running down the margins or the sides of each leaf. The leaves themselves have a very stiff and papery or cardboard kind of like feel. They feel like very, very rough construction paper in your hands. The leaves of ironweed will generally alternate up the stem, just like we can see here. However, there are going to be a few exceptions with some leaves being oppositely placed of each other. We can see a little stink bug there curling along, that's cool. As we're following the leaves down on ironweed on the stem, we're also going to notice this very dingy or rust brown color that the stem has to it. Now the stem can be purplish dingy or it can be rusted brown like we're seeing here. There are some purple tinges, especially on the petioles or the leaf stems. And then here on the main stem of the plant, we can see this dingy, rust brown sort of color to it. Okay, so there's three more obscure plants that you guys will probably see when you're out and about foraging. Each one of these plants is easy to identify. You just won't find very much on them in your field guides, and you won't see very many videos done on these plants. These plants took me several years to learn just because of how obscure they can actually be. So I hope this video has helped some of you guys out. I hope you enjoyed it, and I thank all of you for watching. If you want to learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, or any wild plant for that matter, please make sure to subscribe.